Okay, today's video is going to be a home repair slash explanation on what goes on inside this Wager Atlas coffee machine. So I'm going to start pulling things apart and just run through what exactly each part does uh, so you can then either do your own repair or you have a better understanding of what exactly happens inside the coffee machine and troubleshoot if things aren't working correctly so let's take a look at this bad boy so I've already taken the screws out of here and the top comes off pretty simple the side panels here if you can see are fixed here and usually here this one's snapped off this small allen key you gotta just loosen a little bit. Side screw off. Usually a flathead screwdriver in there. And then that slides back, comes off this back panel. Alright, the front panel, if you want to take that off, there's an Allen head here and an Allen head here. Once they are off, you can then slide it forward and take that off. Uh, the good thing with taking this panel off is it gives you access to the touch pads panels, the switches here, and also gives you access to the top of the groups, which is handy for servicing. Take that apart. So, all right, so it looks like there's a lot going on up here um, but once once you get to know it, it it's quite simple so on the boiler uh, we've got a tube here that just comes for a display pressure on the boiler here we've got an anti-vacuum valve and what it does is when the machine cools down, it drops down and it allows pressure outside to equalize with the pressure inside the boiler. So that moves up and down. It's uh, simply a little pin. And a lot of times you get machines that are hissing and this is what's hissing. So there's a little O-ring under here. You can see. This one's... Ah, you can't see because it's perished. It's supposed to have an O-ring sitting there. But then seals against that. And stops the hissing when the machine's hot. And then when the machine's cold, it falls in. And lets cold air in from outside. So that's what that does. We've got another a block off valve. It's just a little blank piece. Then we've got this contraption. Uh, this idea doesn't really work very well because you've got you got plastic sitting. So what it's supposed to do is that's supposed to be solid there. And if ever you have a case where you get too much pressure, that's a safety valve. And that's supposed to expand, let water out. The water's supposed to be caught in there and run from there in underneath the drip tray and be caught up in the drain. I'm not going to show you now. So this thing, I mean, after a few years, this is what they look like. They just sit there and run all around. You might as well take it off altogether. So it's no purpose. And that's the safety pressure stat. Sorry, safety safety valve, not pressure stat. Um, same as what your hot water has at your house. All right, what else have we got here? So we've got, talking about pressure stat, we've got this fella. It's held in by, um, held in by a nut here, and that goes directly to the boiler.
just chop the wire. So you've got this end as a pipe. I'm not sure where the pipe went. And that connects to the boiler. So as the pressure builds up, you get pressure and there's a, a diaphragm that sits in underneath here. It moves. It switches these switches off and turns the arm and off. Once this is off, the pressure inside the boiler will then drop. The diaphragm will move back down and that will click back in. And it's on these old mechanical style uh, thermostats or pressure stats, this is what you hear all day long. Uh, these are good for, I'd say, five to ten years. And then, as you can see, just like the car, um, the old cars that had points, you can see the burn marks there. So these will eventually burn out and need replacing. So that's what controls the temperature in the boiler. Works purely on pressure. Uh, here, you can see got a number of connecting points so one element is connected on that side and one element is connected on, on that side so you're going that's strange I didn't know that machine had two elements let's have a look at that all right correction this machine actually has three elements so these two will join up these two will be the other element and these ones will be the third element so there's three elements in this machine. And it, these poles are all connected. So there's actually, it's only these white wires that are switching the element on and off. Um, the other two wires that I've cut comes from the switch, the main switch. And now we're talking about the main switch. That's it here. So that is connected to the element and is connected to a couple of other things as well uh, including including the control box control box which is sitting there which controls each group head underneath that we've got the motor and there was a pump sitting here at one stage um, so the motor obviously drives the pump the pumps the water into both the boiler and into the groups so when we talk about it pumps water into the boiler you might say how does it distinguish between the boiler and the groups so if we look down here underneath here is a solenoid if I can get to it give me a second okay this solenoid sits under the drip tray is in charge it opens and closes here so it's pretty much like a tap so water comes in that opens and lets water through here and that runs into the boiler that is shut off most of the time okay along here there is the drain, the main drain. A uh, couple of. Here's actually a tap that you can uh, drain the boiler. I'm not sure that will open now. Oh, yeah, it does open. That will drain the water from the boiler. Not all machines have that. And that one there is an expansion valve. Is this, if there's too much pressure in the system, that expansion valve will start dripping out here. Usually it happens when it just leaks, it starts leaking over time. But if there is too much pressure in the system, um, that will release water in there, through there. Um, these guys along here are flow meters. They spin around. Okay, here's the flow meters. 
So how they work is you've got a connection point and you've got a little sensor under here. And when you look inside the flow meter, you've got a wheel that spins around with two magnets sitting on top. Those two magnets get read by the lid here and send some message back to the board. So this being three group machine has three flow meters. Now if you're having trouble with the measurements coming out when you press the buttons there either flows too long or it starts flashing doesn't get a, 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 a proper reading this is your first point of call. So either there's magnets are worn out, the lid's worn out, or calcium has built up in there, stopping this one from spinning. That should be spinning freely, which this one is. So this one should have no problem at all. Um, there's a seal on there too, which is very important. All right, moving along. Moving along. These are actually just pressed in and held in by plastic locators. You can see someone's put silicon on this to try to keep it intact. There's a ribbon cable. And there's three ribbon cables, one for each. And that just goes back to the, goes back to the main board. Uh, the main board has a switch that switches on and off and allows water to flow out the group heads. Uh, so the group heads all have a solenoid valve. Let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look in here. In behind there, where my hand is, it's the bottom of the group. I haven't taken that panel off yet. So that solenoid valve you can see there, one for each group, is in charge of letting the water out. So if you have a look at this one, I've loosened this already. So there's two parts to this. One is in here where the water, the water circulates around the group and keeps the group at a set temperature so there you got nice thick copper pipes in and out on the bottom um, so the, the water's just running around there then when we press the button at the front it opens the solenoid valve down below and water flows through the filter into a tiny little jet which is located in there very easy to get blocked up so part of the service should be cleaning these uh, that's what I do it's not what all coffee techs do some just change the seals and call it a day. Um, so, talking about seals, let me take this out. Under here, I'm gonna pop this out. Is where the seals are and the shower screens. These block up, and I've got another video on how to clean these. But really, if you're back flushing with powder every day, that should never block up or look like that. You see any, can't see anything through there. It's amazing you can get water through there. And these are the seals that we are out after about six months. They should be nice and soft. If they're not, they'll break like that. That's no good. Time for change. Um, yeah, so this group head, People freak out when they see this, 
This is inside the machine. It's inside the boilers. It's not something you need to worry about. But when we service the machine, we clean up all that calcium in there. You can't decalcify a commercial machine like this. Um, you can descale one at home, but a commercial one like this, having a really good water filter is, um, is all you can do with some lime build up protection. Um, let's move along to the taps. All right, if you ever need to get these taps off, a couple of screwdrivers either side and you can pop them out. Um, these taps on the Wagers are really, really good. And they are really, really tight. So to get them off, usually you have to bang them. So you can get a, a shifter on there, bang them. Unscrew them. In here, if you've got a leaking steam valve or hot water, that's usually the problem. They don't tend to leak up the shaft much, these ones, uh, but that tends to leak. Um, also, when you're servicing these machines, Need to put grease on there. Food grade. Food grade grease. All on there. Stop that wearing out. Uh, the steam valve and the hot water valve, exactly the same. They work the same way. All right, if you found that useful, don't forget to subscribe, like our channel and don't forget to order some coffee off our website. Uh, special thanks to our new friends in Canada that order coffee. So that's really nice. Get some uh, international sales going. Cheers. Thanks everyone. Uh, good luck with your repairs.